Okay, next news. Uyghur Muslims convicted in sham trials in Chinese re-education camps. <clears throat> Location, um, Xinjiang, China. German news broadcaster Deutsche Welle um, recently spoke to four Uyghur former detainees from Xinjiang, a remote, remote region in northwestern China, whose mostly Muslim population has long faced repression by the Chinese authorities, including internment in re-education camps. After months of imprisonment, the detainees had to retroactively choose from the choose of the list of crimes that they had been sorry. After months of imprisonment, the detainees had to retroactively choose the crimes for which they had been incarcerated. All four recalled when they were handed a piece of paper containing over 70 acts and forced to confess their crimes. Most of the so-called crimes were re religious acts, such as praying or wearing a headscarf. The fact that most of the acts were deemed illegal were of a religious nature is further indication that the Chinese authorities are targeting the religion and cultural practices of its Muslim minorities in a, an attempt to eradicate them, as activists have long claimed. Hmm. This is so, this is so evil. This is, is this and, okay, so this and the war on, in Yemen are the two most current evil, actually, no, North Korea as well. But North Korea, this, and the war in Yemen are the greatest evils against humanity of our time, and most of it is being ignored. This is being ignored by a lot of Muslims as well. Hmm. If this was done, if, this, if, if a fraction of these crimes on Muslims was being done by United States or Israel, the amount of outcry you would have gotten against it from the Muslim community would be astronomically higher. I mean, and again, every time I say this, some people give me examples of Muslims actually talking about this. Yes, I've seen those myself, okay? I'm not saying Muslims are not talking about this. I'm saying it's just both Muslims and non-Muslims are not talking. This is like, we have in the past, I don't know how many years, in my lifetime, we haven't gotten this close to what Nazi, this close to what Nazi Germany was doing. Again, every time I say this, people are like, I mean, this is not like Nazi Germany, where there are no gas chambers, they're not killing them. Yeah, I'm saying this is the closest we have. I'm not saying it's the same. I'm not saying it's at, if if Nazi Germany was like hundred, and we were at zero, now we're at two when it comes to these guys, or maybe even half. You were just this. We have concentration camps, and people are being put in concentration camps but more than a million of them for the crime of being muslim and actually i hope we don't get a defense of this because in atheist republic sometimes people in the comment section defend this so like oh my god yeah this is what muslims deserve so you will, we, hate, we, you will hate the comment section because there are i found many people commenting oh but islam would have done the same thing the islamic countries do the same thing and stuff like that i found I, so i'm tired of responding to these people i mean they believe in collective punishment do we really have to go every time over what collect how horrible collective punishment is like this yeah. is what the, i mean these people know how stupid it is when they say like well communists committed so many crimes against us so now let's go and kill all atheists because of the crimes of the communists like this is so stupid i mean i don't even need to respond i mean I, i'm tired i'm exhausted of responding to how evil i mean even people within our community defending this is is, is shameful but go on rifka you want to say something i wanted to say that mindset is very childlike people who are like yeah mm -hmm. but they would do it too or they did it to uh, you know she threw sand at me so it's okay if i you know it doesn't matter whether, even if it were true that someone else would do this or has done this, that doesn't make what these people are doing right. And that's not a justification for horrendous uh, human rights violations, regardless of who did it or didn't do it or who had or hadn't. So it's just a very juvenile way of looking at things, in my opinion, because that's well, the kind of thing you hear children say. This this actually feeds into Islamic radicalism. Like this is the best way for you to promote Islamic radicalism, right? And the problem is that if it does eventually promote Islamic radicalism more than it currently exists in China, China might not even see that as a failure because they need excuses to justify what they're doing. So maybe if they get a few suicide bombings here and there, they're like, oh, great. This, see, this is why we do what we're doing. Um Oh, so Rivka, you, you're muted, but it was very animated. What you said. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. What did you unmute yourself? I just 
wanted to say, like, you're right. Like, people would go, see, we told yeah. you. We This is why. We had to, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I always say it's, it's not late for China. If they want to fight Islam, they could hire us. We have a lot of experience. We know how to fight Islam. We have... We have convinced thousands of Muslims out of Islam through the past 15 years. And I always, here's a free tip for China. Well, I'll get, I'll get to you, Susanna. Here's a free tip to China before they actually hire me. I'll just put this for free out there. The best way to fight Islam is to befriend Muslims, okay? People are not going to change their opinions if you attack them and if you're hostile to them, okay? If you make them feel, look, what, look in the United States, the rate of Muslims leaving Islam in second generation is 25%, which is it's just so high compared to uh, Europe, which is much lower because they're segregated. They feel as others in Europe, especially in the United Kingdom. But if they feel part of a society and they feel welcome and they, they, other, sources, other ideas and other sources of influence might actually change their opinions, right? So, I mean, I mean China is supposed to be smart, right? They have these... They have a lot of experts. They should know that this doesn't work. I don't understand. China, like, you could you could hire us, send us a plane here. We'll come there. We'll, we'll help you come up with strategies um, on how to address this evil. Susanna, what do you want to say? So I wanted to provide more background. First of all, I think we should maybe describe a little bit what goes on in these re-education camps because or concentration camps because just saying that people don't really get a sense of what goes on so typically detainees are forced to endure countless hours of indoctrination in language classes they're trying to get them to stop speaking the Uyghur language and they have them perched on these tiny stools in barred imprisoned classrooms with armed guards and um in some facilities, they have to watch TV propaganda broadcast that praise President Xi Jinping for hours on end. Um, and then typically they're just berated and worn down, trying, being demanded to confess for crimes that they've committed over and over and over until they eventually capitulate. These four people that were described in this report were basically only freed because they are Kazakhs or they had residency in Kazakhstan. And so they were allowed to leave, but they couldn't stay in China. They had to leave the country entirely. Um, also, um, and they're of, separated from their families for all this time as well, right? Like, yes. And um, anyone who tries to communicate with their families or outside of the country is under extreme threat. Um, so I noticed on Twitter, I think it was Beige commented below when we posted this news um, saying like, oh, I wonder why the report doesn't mention the um, uh, ETIM, which stands for the East Turkestan Islamic Movement, which is um, a terrorist group that has committed a lot of terrorist activity in the state for um, a really long time. So um, part of the reason that the state is trying to justify this act is because in 2009, there were ethnic riots where more than 140 people were died and hundreds were injured. And um, with, with protesters attacking Han, ethnically Han residents, and burning buses. For those who don't know, Han is like the majority ethnic group, and they were state-sponsored to move into that state and kind of um, engineer the demographics. And then in 2014, a terrorist attack was carried out in a market that killed 31 people, and there's been a lot of different terrorist attacks. So the state is trying to justify this as trying to maintain ethnic unity or um, uh, support it. Like, oh, we're just trying to, they say that in the re-education camps, they're giving these Uyghurs job skills. And if they give them job skills, then they will not be as likely to be susceptible to the influence of um, terrorist propagandists. Um, however... Hey. These people who are coming out of these concentration camps saying that they didn't learn anything, you know, they're just being brainwashed. And Bij, previously in a Secular Jihadist chat, asked us to watch a documentary about the terrorism in um, Xinjiang. 
And I watched that documentary and it was interesting. And I did learn a lot more about the frequency of the terrorist attacks in this state. But that documentary was from a state sponsored news source. Um, so while I found it helpful, I'm still very skeptical of the veracity of the information provided in those documentaries. The British, British Pakistani atheist is saying we should have Arsalan Hayadat on. He, he is an eager who eager who who has access to deniers who have survived the camps. Okay, and uh, so then maybe you. Out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to address uh, before we go to Shubham because Shubham wanted to say something. Um, before I do that, I do want to address some, something I'm seeing in the chats because some people are comparing this to what the United States does, and I don't think that's fair at all. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. But, it depends. Yeah, yeah okay. But in other words, let's say it's saying sounds like CIA inter interrogation tactics. Um, Paka, Jung, ZZZ is saying like Guant Guantanamo Bay also. And I think on Facebook, somebody also said something similar about, oh, the United States would do the same. I'm hoping people realize that this is way, way worse than anything the United States is doing right now. Um, I mean, it's not even it's not even close, right? It's not even close. You guys realize that, right? Like... Um, and does anybody disagree with this? Do you guys any any of you disagree with this? Shabham, Rif, Rifka, no. I mean, I think it's ridiculous to compare U.S. to what China is doing now. I don't think it's comparable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, Suzanne. I think it's also important to point out what happens to a lot of these people after these fraudulent trials. So. Oh, but. By the way, just just to be just to be fair to another godless atheist, she's saying no, no, no. I'm making it. Sim I'm not making. I'm I'm making a similarity at all. What China is doing is way worse. Okay, yeah, I might have read that wrong. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, I I understand what she's saying. Yeah. So um, a lot of detainees just straight up disappear after their trials. So the reason why these detainees did not just straight up disappear is because they're Kazakh and they were just deported. Um, and, um, this is, so for people who actually are con convicted, quote unquote, in these trials, um, they are often just disappeared. They're continually moved in between different levels of detainee security camps, or they're just sent to an actual prison because there's the detainee re-education camps, and then there's the prisons. So a lot of people are sent to prisons, and a lot of the people who are sent to prisons are faith leaders because they are believed or considered to be irreformable. And um, wow. they um, are accused of uh, inciting jihad, advocating Sharia law, forcing women to wear a headscarf, distributing religious propaganda materials, or um, they can be uh, identified or scrutinized for simply giving up smoking or drinking. Okay, um, another Sarah on Facebook is saying we we literally have kids in cages right now in the southern border. Come on, Sarah, if you go look at the numbers, it's it's a fraction of what China is doing. Both the conditions and the numbers and the reasoning. Again, I'm not excusing anything that the United States might be doing on the, the border, but this. But if you just compare them, it's not even close, Sarah. Just go look at the, what China is doing. It's not even close. It's not even close. Anyways. Um, yeah, I'd encourage people to read the article. Um, the All the sources that we use for our news is included in the description of this video, at least on YouTube, I'm assuming on Facebook as well. So, you know, go do your own research. Um, and if you want to learn more about what these re-education programs actually look like, you should read this book called Thought Reform and the Psychology of Totalism, A Study of Brainwashing in China. This is the seminal text on brainwashing. And a lot of people don't know that the term that we call brainwashing literally comes, it was first used by an American journalist, Edward Hunter, as a translation of the colloquialism, she's now, I'm, no, I just butchered that Chinese, which literally means in Chinese, wash brain. So we get the word brainwashing from 
Chinese communist thought regimes. Um, and if what was described in 1961 is anything like what is happening today, it's absolutely horrific. There are few things as disgusting as the breaking of another human being's will. And um, what happens to these detainees is reprehensible. Okay, let's go to our next story. Uh, before people think we are Islam apologists, the next story It has is gonna... nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with people that. People think that. Oh, wait, I forgot, by the way, Shubham um, wanted to add something. No, uh, Susanna already mentioned what I wanted to say, so I'm good. Okay, okay. The next story is going to help us help our audience realize that we're not Islam apologists. It's about but... human rights and freedom of expression. Okay. Yes, yes. People can't just see the difference between fighting Islam and fighting Muslims, right? We defend, we defend fighting Islam. In fact, I mean, at least I, I'm not going to speak for the rest of us. I think Islam should have died yesterday, right? By by dying, I'm not talking about the people. I'm talking about the ideology, all right? Um, but whenever we, the most effective way of fighting Islam is to call out and uh, speak out against people who are fighting Muslims as well, okay? Not just because it's the right thing to do, if that's not good enough for you and you just want Islam to be, even if you're just a psychopath that just wants, that doesn't care about your fellow human beings, but you hate Islam so much that you want it wiped off the planet, I'm telling you that at least for strategic reasons, support this method. It works better if you are, if you're not mis mistreating Muslims. Fighting Islam is more effective if you are not mistreating Muslims. Anyways, let's news. thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why, what has, what's holding you back, okay? If you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like, bell, <laughs> and also, if, you, if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like, oh, this person told us that they want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos, but nah, you, we think is no. And oh, look, oh, they also hit the bell button, but nah, you guys are too controversial. We want to show them mainstream stuff. We want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even you know, people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, nah, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well. And share, share our videos because... You know, we do get demonetized, that's an obvious, on every one of our videos, so F that, but we don't care about that anymore. <laughs> but we also get deprioritized, and that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritized, what does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right, and all that, you know, on, the, on people's homepages, and that's how channels grow. Unfortunately, we can't grow, so we need you guys to share our videos 